Hey everybody, this is John Buck, back with another Continuous Time Linear Systems video. And in this video, we're going to talk about uh, the property of invertibility of a system, and particularly how we tell if two systems are inverses of each other when they're both LTI. So for LTI systems, how do we check whether two systems with their based on their impulse responses are LTI? Invertibility is a really important real-world property, and a lot of the systems we build as engineers are trying to be an inverse or at least an approximate inverse to some real-world system. For example, the equalizer for a stereo is trying to be the inverse of the, uh, the frequency response of the room, the response of the room, and also the amplifier and speakers itself. And in fact, modern stereos often, or audio systems, come with this sort of calibration or equalization thing where you put a little microphone in the room and push a button and it plays some sweeps or chirps, uh, frequency sweeps, and based on that tries to estimate the room. And it's estimating that room so it can build an inverse for the effect of the room and pre-compensate everything to give you the best listening experience. So that's a one example of where inverse systems are very important practical systems. Okay, so I'll uh, stop the video now and switch over to the whiteboard and, and explain how we do this for LTI systems. So the general definition of an invertible system is we say a system is invertible if we can always take the output and work backwards to figure out what the input must have been to give us this output for any choice of input. So no matter what you put into the system, you can think of it as like a game between two people. You're going to put an input into the system, process it with the system, and hand me the output, and I need to be able to guess what input you used. If I can do that for any input, that system is invertible. But that we can, like uh, causality and uh, stability, we can make that more precise for the case of uh, LTI systems where the impulse response tells us everything. So let's think about what that looks like in block diagrams. So if we have an LTI system, we're going to put x of t into it using the impulse response h of t to get y of t, right? So we'll have this LTI system. And so to find the inverse, we need another system that we put y of t into who has some new output. We'll call it, say, w of t. But we need that w of t to be equal to the original x of t. And ideally, we'd like this new system to be LTI as well. So it has its own impulse response, g of t. And so if we think about what this means in terms of convolutions, to get start from x of t, process it with a system to get some output y of t, and then treat that y of t as the impulse response to a new system with a different impulse response to get a new output, and have that output be the same as the original input. Right? So that means this overall box of two L series of L two LTI systems is acting like the identity system, like a, a, just a wire that goes through without changing anything, a direct connection. But let's see how that means for convolution. Well, first, the, the first output, y of t, would have to be x of t convolved with h of t. Okay, and then we say, well, I took that, y, that my second output, w of t, will be y of t convolved with g of t. Again, because this y is the input here, g is the impulse response, so I convolve the input with the impulse response to get the output, which here is w, and we're trying to say, well, is it equal to x of t? It needs to be if g is the, is the inverse of h, if this system is the inverse system of h. And so I can uh, plug into this, I could say, well, this means that w of t is equal to uh, x of t times h of t, Right, substituting that for my y. So I'm taking this equation here and plugging it in for y of t. Or I guess plug it in for y of t here. That gives me this. And then I'm convolving that with g of t. So I can use the, the uh, associative property of convolution now to simplify this further and say, well, I can switch the parentheses around because of the associative property. to be like this. And so if I want w of t to be equal to x of t, I need this convolution in parentheses to be equal to the thing that doesn't change, that won't change x of t when I convolve with it. Well, what can I convolve with that doesn't change it? Pause the video for a second, think about it, and come back. <clears throat> yes, con convolving h and g has to give me an impulse, right? An impulse is the thing I convolve with that leaves the signal unchanged. 
Right, so if this whole cascade of h followed by g, the two systems are going to get back to the original x of t, that means the, com the convolution of the two impulse responses, this effective system, has to have an impulse response that's delta of t. So that's the condition for two things being inverse systems of each other. Let's scoot up and make a little more room, and we can write that down. So two, impulse, two LTI systems are inverse systems if the convolution of their impulse responses gives the unit impulse. We're putting equations on it that g of t convolved with h of t is also equal to h of t convolved with g of t. We know from the commutative property of convolution. Either one, either way I do the convolution, I have to get back just delta of t. So let's see an example of this. So let's look at a very simple example where both of the, the h of t and g of t are impulses. And the first one is an impulse this would be at uh, minus 5, right? This is my h of t with area 1. And my g of t is an impulse that, that's at time plus 5. So the key to solving this, right, to say if are h of t and g of t inverse systems? Well, to answer that question, like we saw on the previous page, we need to say are that's the same as saying, if I convolve h of t with g of t, do I get delta of t? Well, the key to solving this problem is to remember the important property of convolving with a delay, right? We say if I are integrating with a delay, if I have any signal, say x of t, and I take it inside an integral with delta of t minus some delay v, and do this integral from minus infinity to plus infinity, this will be equal to uh, the uh, x evaluate. This is the sifting property, right? This will just be x of v. So that tells me from the convolution here that I'm going to get the result of, of putting t minus 5 in here for h of t. So I can say that, that delta of t minus 5, if I just plug in for g first, convolve with h of t. is what I get when I shift that over by 5, right? I set that equal to 5. I shift it by 5 the other way. So writing out the convolution in this form, I can see this integral will be 0 everywhere except where tau equals 5. And then I put this in for tau equals, I get h of <clears throat> uh, t minus 5. And putting in t minus 5, I get t minus 5 plus 5 when I plug in the equation for h up here and they cancel, giving me delta of t. Right, so if I make myself a little room here, this tells me that the, because the convolution of g of t with h of t gives me delta of t, we can say that g of t and h of t are inverse systems. And in a way, that shouldn't be too surprising, because if we look at it, we say, well, just intuitively, we know g of t says, when I convolve that impulse delayed by 5, it says I'm going to take the input and shift it by 5 to the right. h of t says, I convolving with an impulse at minus 5, shifts the input to the left. So if I put these two back to back, it says take the input signal, shift it 5 to the right, and then back 5 to the left. Or depending on which order you do them, 5 to the left, and then back 5 to the right. But that makes sense that you end up back with the same signal you started with. How about we'll look at one more example and then and then wrap up here. When I convolve, for this case, I have h of t is a rectangular pulse that goes from 0 to 2, and g of t is the, uh, the signal that I get with an impulse at time 0 and a negative impulse at time 1. So if, if, I, run a, a, if I run something through h of t and then through g of t, do I get back to the original system? Well, again, I can use uh, properties of convolving with impulses to help me here. Right? I can look at this and say that, that if I want to look at g of t convolved with h of t, I'm going to get uh, put the two delta functions in. Right? And after I do this, I can then use the distributive property 
to write this as two different convolutions. So that gives me delta of t convolved with h of t minus delta of t minus 1 convolved with h of t. And so the first one, we know convolving with an impulse, gives me the second thing back. The second one, convolving with an impulse delayed by 1, shifts me 1 to the right. I get that becomes h of t minus 1. So just if I think about my, my figure up here at the top, I can say it's like I take this original signal, move it 1 to the right, and subtract it from itself. And so if I draw them lined up over each other, I should be able to subtract them and see whether I, what I get back is an impulse. So I'll do that up here in the upper right corner. So I've got my h of t, and I have negative h of t minus 1. I guess I've already flipped the amplitude, so rather than I, I can add them now, I just add the positive version with the negative version here. And what I get looks like this. It's from 0 to 1, the amplitude is 1. Then from 1 to 2, they cancel out. And then from 2 to 3, I'm left with just the negative 1 when I add these at each time. And so this is the result of convolving the two, and it's definitely not the unit impulse function, right? So I, I can look at the figure. If it wasn't already clear enough, drawing that figure makes it clear that, that this is not the unit impulse function. And so what we have here is not, these two are not inverse systems. So in this case, I don't have inverse systems, but I... I but because when I convolve the two things, I don't get an impulse back. So to wrap up, we saw in this video that two LTI systems are inverse systems of each other when convolving their impulse responses gives me the delta of t back, just the unit impulse back, because that means the series connection of these two systems has no overall effect on the signal, that the one system undoes whatever the first system did. And so when I put them together in series, I'm left back with my original input signal. And then we saw two examples, one where they are inverses of each other based on time delays in equal but opposite directions, and then the second one with convolving with a rectangle and a few impulses where they didn't cancel each other out. Okay, so that's all for this time. I'll see you in the next video.